Africa Investor Today is proudly brought to you in association with Petro SA and a Frexum Bank. Hello to all our viewers. It's a new week and as always we bring you the latest African business news. We start with politics and economy. Namibians began voting this past Friday in general elections, expected to see the ruling Southwest Africa People's Organization, SWAPO, return to power despite a tough challenge from a new breakaway party. Scores of people formed long queues outside voting stations across the country before polls opened at 7 a.m. President Hifike Punye Pohamba is seeking a second term in office, with his main competition posed by the upstart Rally for Democracy and Progress, the RDP. Former Foreign Minister Hidipo Hamutanya launched the new party two years ago after he lost his bid to take over SWAPO following the retirement of Liberation Leader Sam Nujoma in 2004. The two are the biggest of the 12 parties contesting the presidency, with RDP claiming about 250,000 supporters from an estimated 1.1 million voters. British Prime Minister Gordon Brown held out the prospect on Friday that Zimbabwe could be readmitted to the Commonwealth in 2011 if it pushes ahead with reforms. Zimbabwe withdrew from the Commonwealth in 2003 after the organization renewed a suspension imposed a year earlier when President Robert Mugabe won re-election in a poll that some observers said was rigged. In an article for the Zimbabwe Independent newspaper, Brown said Zimbabwe's power-sharing government had chalked up achievements, including raising living standards and taming hyperinflation. But he said opponents of reform, both inside and outside Zimbabwe, would do everything possible to obstruct change. The article was released in Trinidad and Tobago, where Brown is attending a summit of the Commonwealth, which groups 53 countries, mostly former British colonies. With that, we must take a short break. More news coming up. Redefining energy means redefining life. At the Petroleum, Oil and Gas Corporation of South Africa, our commitment to greater innovation and greener fuels has made us pioneers in the field of gas to liquids technology. It has also earned us worldwide recognition for producing the cleanest fuels through environmentally friendly processes. That's how we've become the international leader in diesel technology. Through pure innovation, pure energy, pure brilliance. In companies and markets news now, in a statement released Friday, NASPERS reported a 6% increase in revenue to 13.5 billion rand for the six months ended 30th of September 2009. Operating profit grew by 19% to 2.8 billion and core headline earnings were up to 2.4 billion or 6 rand 48 per share, an increase of 37% on the previous year. Tan Foslu, NASPA's chairman, stated, Most operations performing satis performed satisfactorily despite challenging economic conditions. He continued that the contributions from our associates are valuable. NASPA's share of income from associates, including Tencent in China, Mail.ru in Russia and Abril in Brazil, amounted to 872 million rand, more than double the contribution compared to the same period last year. Hopes for future growth are now being pinned on the company's online business. Meanwhile, NASPA's CEO, Kurs Becker, said he has more than $600 million at his disposal and is looking for acquisitions in Southeast Asia in the hope of improving the company's presence there. And BHP Billiton, the world's largest mining group, said Friday that it would use its strong cash position to capitalize on the recovery in commodities to fund new projects as most companies were cutting back their investments. CEO Marius Kloppers said at BHT, BHT's annual meeting in Australia that the company would invest about 10 billion rand in capital and exploration projects to take advantage of the expected surge in demand from major markets. This was in addition to the 14 billion BHP had committed to similar projects in the previous financial year. Kloppers did not spell out details of the new ventures, but the investment by the group, which has significant operations in South Africa, follows a revival in optimism that some economies had begun to respond to stimulus measures to counter the global recession. BHP said two months ago that South Africa was one of the countries where it was considering new investments because the risk was lower than in other parts of Africa. We're going to have to take another short break, but we will be back in just a moment. Afrexum Bank is Africa's leading trade finance bank. 
an organization dedicated to promoting African trade through credit, risk-bearing and advisory services. We pride ourselves on having local presence throughout the continent and are committed to extending our award-winning trade and project finance programs to unlock private sector development continent-wide. We invite you to become a part of our vision for a strong Africa in a changing world. If you trade within Africa, contact us to support you. In banking and finance news, the Bank of Kigali, or BK, has shown resilience to the current global economic downturn by registering 4.5 billion Rwandan francs in net profit in nine months of 2001, compared to 4.2 billion registered in the whole of 2007. The bank's financial statement for the quarter ended 30th of September 2009, released to the press on Friday, shows that net interest income increased by 24% compared to the same period last year. Henry Gaperi, the vice chairman of the board of directors of the bank, attributed the gain to continuous improvement in customer service, product innovation and expansion in the branch network. As a result of the liquidity crunch, interest rates rose to 16% from 6% in April last year. However, according to Gaperi, BK maintained its interest rates and continued to issue new credit to the economy. Angola's Banco Africano de Investimentos, or BAI, the nation's biggest bank in terms of deposits, plans to open a representative office in South Africa this year in a bid to tap into Africa's biggest economy. BAI Chief Executive Jose de Lima Massano told Reuters the firm planned to open an office in South Africa to evaluate the banking sector's potential for growth and business opportunities between the two countries. He did not say when he expected BAI to operate as a full-service bank in the country. BAI is just one of several Angolan banks that have begun expanding abroad. It also has operations in Portugal, Cape Verde and several business partnerships in Sao Tome and Principe and Brazil. We still have our infrastructure news coming up, but first a short break. Stay with us. Africa Investor, the leading African investment magazine, is essential reading for investors in Africa, filled with the very latest in pan-African investment and finance news. In addition, log on to africa-investor.com to find out more about our exciting capital market infrastructure and tourism events, and our long-standing investable Africa Investor 100 Index Series, which tracks over $600 billion of African equities. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor. In infrastructure news now, power utility ESCOM of South Africa will have to fork out at least 10 billion rand for road repairs and construction on the network, servicing its power stations from now until 2015. The cost of the road repairs is likely to be questioned when ESCOM's tariff increase application of 45% a year for three years is considered because road repair is not its competency. In its application, ESCOM argued that the bad state of some roads was a danger to security of supply. The Democratic Alliance said yesterday a 1 billion rand upgrade was needed for roads even before construction began on Medupi, a new power station in Limpopo. The roads bill is a significant cost addition to ESCOM's build program for which it has to raise 385 billion rand. In the past financial year, ESCOM spent more than 500 million on road repairs. In our final story today, Namibia's state-owned petroleum group Namco has been offered to take up a 10 to 15 percent equity stake in a new 400,000 barrels a day refinery to be built by its counterpart in neighboring South Africa. MD Sam Buke said Namco has not yet made a decision on whether it would take South Africa's national oil company Petro SA up on that offer, but said that strategically it made sense for Namibia, which imports all of its fuel demand. He also said that the long-delayed Kudu gas-to-power project was likely to start producing in 2014. And that is all we have for you in our report this Monday. Do join us again tomorrow for more news. Cheers.
Africa Investor Today is proudly brought to you in association with Petro SA and a Frexham Bank.